Hey, wanted to do a quick update on our floor. Uh, kind of where we're at. I've been, uh, I raised the floor up here. Um, that's why we have new subflooring. And then I got really busy with work, <laughs> so I haven't done too much. So now I'm actually putting in the oak floor and I wanted to show kind of how I do that. Um, so first off, uh, after you get your floor, you know, where you are, where you want it, uh, I tend to go down and I sand all the joints just to make with a with a sander just to make sure everything's smooth there's no uh, bumps and you put down your paper i'm using this aqua bar b it works really well um use staples put it down and now it's time to put our floor down so i'm using white oak um i love white oak it is super stable doesn't do too many weird things when it gets wet it stays pretty much the same size it's very hard, it's a great floor. Um, they actually use white oak in ships for that specific reason. It's it's such a stable uh, floor, you know, stable wood and it doesn't do too much swelling when it gets water damaged. So I love white oak. Uh, this is a section that we've already redone. And so for example, here's a grate that we did that's actually built into the floor. And that's something I'm gonna show. Uh, actually, we're gonna do one of these, which is a return so there's a return it's built into the floor it's totally flush um, they look really nice when they're done like that so this floor has been in for about a year and now we're taking it to the new area uh, it took a long time to get around and like for example cope all these weird joints around these post and beam uh, pieces but uh, everything's in now um, there's not a lot of expansion joint right there but whenever you're putting in the floor you want to make sure like you can see down here at the end I've got plenty of expansion all around the floor. Um, just where it was butting up that beam, I didn't put too much expansion joint. So what I really wanted to show was uh, kind of how I put the floor in. This is definitely not the professional way to do it. If you're a pro, you're gonna use a compressor and, and a nailer. I use a drill and an impact driver. So we're to another vent. Um, come in here and I, I tape the vent. Uh, with aluminum foil tape, get everything pretty stable. And as you can see, actually, I had to come up a little bit with some shims. Uh, it doesn't look pretty, but when it's all done, it'll be really stable. Uh, and the big thing is, when you put your vent in, so this is what the vents look like. Um, vents inside here. All four sides have this channel. Um, and uh, that that perfectly fits the standard tongue and groove, I guess it's technically a groove, of uh, the floor here. So I'll show you here. I'm going to put the camera in a tripod for a second. Get the tripod going here. Sorry for the camera shake. There we go. So uh, put it down like that. There we go. All right, hopefully you can see that pretty well. So uh, take my trusty little hammer here, and I'm just going to tap this into position. You just have to be really, really gentle when you're doing this. Um, you don't want to hit anything too hard, cause it to misalign or break. Okay, so I highly recommend if you're ever putting these vents in, leave the vent in while you do this because you need to be checking to make sure you're not pinching it too tight or you're not causing it to be uneven where it's gonna rock um, when you're doing this. You don't want to like tighten this whole thing down, put a bunch of floor in, throw the vent in and it doesn't fit. So definitely keep pulling out and putting it in the vent as you do it uh, to make sure everything fits nicely. So that's that I had pre-done. Now in order to get the, the groove to be a tongue, because this direction we need the tongues, they sell these little, uh, it's a long strip, it's like six feet long, but I just cut a little section. And you can see in profile, it's this little, um, I don't know, I don't know what you call it. I guess it's a really long, I don't know, really long tongue. <laughs> um, so you put the thing in there and it's the same exact thing that we used to reverse the floor uh, down here where we had to pick the floor up down there, we had to reverse it. So you put your little tongue piece in and uh, then I can put in my next piece. So I've got my next piece here. Again, you know, just push it gently, just tap it gently until you get it into position. Now when you're tightening this way, don't overdo it because you want to make sure, see it's already getting a little bit 
a little bit too tight. So a little tap action there. You want this vent to be easy to remove and you don't want to bring this out of square. So that seems like it's pretty good. Now, this is my process for screwing the floor in. Um, air nailer is definitely faster. Anybody who's a carpenter out there is probably gonna smack their face when they see this, but uh, I use two tools. I use a drill. This happens to be a CXS Festool drill. I absolutely love this little bugger. It's amazing. So because it's white oak, you have to drill the floor. You cannot uh, just drill straight into this with a screw because you're gonna, you're gonna crack it. So uh, pre-drill it. I happen to be using a 1 8 inch drill bit. Um, and then I'm just using two drills because I, I don't like changing the bit all the time. Then I'm using a T15. Pretty sure it's T15. Uh, oh, T10. I take it back. It's a T10. And then I use these screws. I love them. These uh, fin trim screws, 8 by 2 and an eighth. Uh, because these actually bury, they're almost more like nails than screws. Um, they happen to screw in, but they act exactly like an old school nail. In the old days, you actually nailed these floors in by hand. And there you go. So now that's in position, this will not ever come out. Um, the screw is much stronger even than the nail. Uh, it has way more uh, resistance to coming back out. So then, uh, for example, I would be building this up a little before I work my way this direction so I keep everything square. Uh, it's more important to kind of keep this square up against the wall uh, because that, that doesn't move and I can adjust things on this side. So let's say we needed to cut another little piece here. Well, what I do is, let me show you. So uh, i try to do this with a tripod. So I have a big uh, pile of wood here. Um, that's the wood, it's been seasoning, it's been staying inside the room, coming up to the correct humidity, uh, unfortunately for like a month because I haven't been working. Uh, but it doesn't need that long. Um, there's my extra screws. What I do is I break down a bundle and then I'll pull out all the nice pieces that don't really have any knots and I'll keep those kind of together in a big pile. And then over here, I'll put the pieces that have knots or have damage that I need to uh, that I need to work on. So anything with knots or damage, I use it in areas, for example, this is gonna have cabinets underneath over top of it. So it's a good area to hide damaged pieces like these big knotted pieces down here. So the cabinets are gonna come 24 inches off the bottom uh, before the toe kick. So I know that first 24 inches is kind of free area for, for crappy wood. Um, in this case, I need to cut a piece for the end here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this little tongue piece off and that this is actually in reverse. It's going to go this way. I'm going to cut this little tongue piece off. I've already marked it. The straight line is where I want to keep the wood. The little zag line is where I want the kerf to be cut off. Uh, this piece has some damage. It came from the damage pile. So it's got a little, a little knot in it. Nothing too big. Again, it, the knots within 24 inches at the end. So I'm going to end up using it under uh, where you're not going to see it. Technique, personal technique I like. I always leave my glasses on my saw so that I know to grab them and put them on. Because that one time you don't is the one time you're gonna have a piece splinter in your face and you're gonna wonder why you didn't. Uh, let me show you this a little better here. Let me see if I can get the camera into position. So you can kind of see on this saw, uh, it's got a double line. That's where the blade is going. In fact, this piece of wood is pretty warped, but it's got a double line. That's exactly where the blade is going to go. Um, so I'm just going to line that line with the piece that I don't want to cut and the zig part on the piece that I do want to cut. I use this little clamp and then that lets me do it one handed here. So here we go. Loud noise. So there we go. So this is the piece I'm going to use at the end here. So this will end up going on this little end right there once I have a chance to put it in. And then rather than have this giant piece of waste, uh, what you can do since this now has the piece cut off here, is this can go on the other end 
and that knot is going to be underneath uh, where the, counter, uh, the, cap, the cabinets are going to be. So that's how I do it. Uh, lots and lots of little screws. Uh, it works pretty well for me. I put a couple pieces of carpet together. I just sit there and go down the line. I happen to like that. Let me show you one last trick that I kind of like um, as I do this. So let me, let me show you here. I don't really need to do this here. I'd probably just hit this pretty hard with a hammer and, and close the gap. But let's say it wasn't closing. Let's say that gap was you know, very, very hard to close because the, the wood's very, very, very much uh, bowed. What I also do is I'll carry an extra lag bolt with me in my little bucket of stuff. And you can put the lag bolt straight into the ground here or into the road. But again, you want to make sure you don't have electrical like right underneath there. And then this gives you a lever to close that gap if you're ever trying to close something that's like really tight. What's kind of nice is with the screws, when they screw in, they actually pull it closed uh, pretty well. Uh, you don't really need to do it with this, but sometimes I've had pieces of wood where you're really fighting with it to get it to close. So that gets it closed, you screw in, and then when you're done, pop the little guy out, put him back in the uh, bucket of screws, and keep going. So, yeah, pretty much that's it. Just a uh, whole bunch of screws. I'll show you on this one here. So, if you have a little bit of a gap, you can angle. Pop my head, in, right? You can angle it a little bit more and then uh, just give it a, a little tap here and that one's kind of not closing but actually with the screw at the angle that it's at it'll end up uh, it'll just pull that close uh, a lot of times I try to go into 45 or even shout or even deeper but if you need to pull it you can do that with a screw it's a slower way to do it, but the good news is you really only need one tool. If you were going to switch blades all the time, you could just use this DeWalt. And then uh, because it's eighth inch, you can just pop this out, pop this in, and you could just use one tool. Uh, highly recommend the DeWalt DC825. That thing is amazing. Best tool ever. So, you know, with just this and a hammer, you could put it on a floor. You don't need an air gun system. So, hope that helps someone out there. Good luck.